Hey everyone, this is WebDeb with Seb, and today I'm going to be talking about the Odin Project. It's a free open source course on full stack web development, and I've had many, many people ask me to give my honest thoughts on the curriculum as a senior developer. Over the past couple of days, I've skimmed the course, and to be honest, it's quite massive. Some people are telling me that it takes between 100 and 500 hours to complete. Because of this huge scope of the curriculum, I've only had enough time to skim the first half of the course, which is called Foundations. In it, they focus on teaching you HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. If you find this video useful and want me to cover the second half of the course, let me know and I'll make a follow-up video. So here's what I will be covering in today's video. I'm going to start with my general impressions of Foundations. After that, I'll share any gaps that I found in the course material. And finally, I will share my opinion on whether or not I think the course is worth it from a professional perspective. Let's jump right in. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the things I really liked about the foundations. First things first, all the technologies covered are relevant in 2022. I use my CLI, Git, GitHub, VS Code, and Flexbox on a daily basis. If you're worried about the course not being up to date, you've got nothing to worry about. The next thing I liked was that they cover a lot of underrated topics very early in the course. Things like Chrome DevTools, Atomic Commits, and you know, new JavaScript patterns like default params and arrow functions. Getting you familiar with these ergonomic features sooner rather than later will make your life much easier as a student of full stack web development. The most important of these is Chrome DevTools in my opinion. They help you debug, modify, tweak styles, and even deal with error messages all within the browser. If I'm being honest, half of the time I spend building front ends is in Chrome DevTools. I shared a post on Reddit a while back telling people to learn the Chrome DevTools and it blew up for a good reason. I met tons of devs who aren't familiar with its full potential and it makes me really happy to see foundations mention them early in the curriculum. The last thing I loved about the foundation section was how some lessons send you off to read documentation, blog posts, and articles. I love this because it closely mirrors how software development works in the real world. Software developers spend a good amount of their time browsing documentation, reading blogs, and dare I say it, consulting Stack Overflow. The curriculum takes a similar approach here. Instead of giving you a complete resource, it asks you to consult multiple websites in order to synthesize this information into knowledge. This is essentially how software is built, and whether intentional or not, I found this a very clever way to integrate this core aspect of software development into the curriculum. Next up, I'm going to be talking about some of the things I didn't like about the foundation section of the Odin project. I only had a single issue with the curriculum, and that's that it doesn't talk about data structures and algorithms. My guess is that at the end of the day, they want you to learn how to build web apps as quickly as possible. That's perfectly fine, but eventually you're going to need to pick up data structures and algorithms at some point. Most jobs require you to pass a technical interview, which tests your knowledge of them. While I'm personally not a fan of this, this is sadly the status quo in the industry and it's something we just have to deal with. Who knows, maybe someone will add this to the curriculum at some point. I mean, it's open source after all. So now that we've covered my first impressions of the course, we're going to move on to some of the gaps. To be honest, there aren't that many that I could find. I mean, the foundations has all of your fundamentals covered. If I had to pick gaps, I think the first one, which I've mentioned before, is the lack of data structure and algorithms content. To be clear, you don't need to be a DSNA expert, but you should have some familiarity with hash tables and lists at some point. I use these pretty frequently in my daily programming. There are tons of free resources online to get familiar with them. I'll share a link in the description. The foundations also lacked advanced content regarding the CLI, Git, and CSS frameworks like Tailwind. I think this is intentional because they just don't want to overwhelm you, but if you're ready for it, I think taking a deeper look at some of these technologies is a good idea. For the CLI, I recommend checking out something called Oh My Zish. It's something that I use every day in my terminal and it provides really cool features like plugins, themes, and even auto completions on CLI tools like Git, pip, and much, much more. Let me show you what I mean by that. So my terminal is currently up and it's running on Oh My Zish. So I have a plugin for Git. And so what that means is if I type Git and then I hit tab, I see a bunch of auto completions. And not only that, but I also see a description. So I see that git add adds file contents to the index, and I see git branch can list, create, or delete branches. 
Furthermore, I could even step in and then hit tab again. And now I see all the options that Git branch presents. I could delete a branch, copy, etc. It's pretty helpful since it gives you contextual information at each step of your command, which is pretty awesome. I use this on a daily basis. As far as Git is concerned, I was surprised to see them show you just the CLI and not any Git GUIs. A Git GUI is simply an application that lets you use Git through a visual interface instead of the CLI. I'm a big fan of the CLI, but if you've ever come across a painful merge conflict, you know that fixing it in the CLI is much harder than in a Git GUI. I highly recommend you check them out if Git is giving you a headache. I'll share this link in the description below. If you want advanced content on CSS frameworks, I'm a big fan of one called Tailwind. While I don't think it's necessary for beginners to take a look at just yet, if your CSS skills are solid, I recommend you check it out. It's basically a bunch of pre-built classes, and the way you use them is you add them to the style attributes of your HTML tags. It's like Legos for CSS, if that makes any sense. Trust me, once you start using it, CSS becomes much more delightful to use. Just make sure you have your CSS fundamentals down before you start reaching for a tool like this. It's now time to answer the big question. Do I think the Odin Project Foundations is worth it? The answer is a very strong yes, absolutely. While professional developers tend to work with React or Angular on their jobs, knowledge of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript is a prerequisite. With a strong background in these, you'll be ready to pick up the frameworks professional developers use on a daily basis. Another reason I think it's worth it is that they're teaching you very practical stuff. The curriculum covers things I learned at internships and jobs. And to drive this point home, their landing page project is super relevant to freelancing. I find myself building landing pages for clients with Flexbox all the time. It's obvious to me that they're teaching you practical knowledge. The last reason I think Foundations is worth it is that it has a pretty vibrant Discord community. I've seen lots of people encouraging each other and motivating each other to stick through it. I see many questions get answered from other students in the community as well. It's refreshing to see such a positive, helpful ecosystem. If you haven't taken advantage of the Discord, definitely check it out. So that just about wraps up my thoughts on the foundation section of the Odin project. Let me know what you'd like to see in a follow-up video for the second half of the course. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I'm going to do my best to respond to as many as I can. Thank you for watching Web Dev with Seb, and I hope to see you again soon.